Welcome back to Always Real Talk. We're here with the president of the Young Democrats, Marcus Goodwin. Marcus, one of the agenda items, as you just mentioned, was the 2020 election, which is going to be hot, you know, as you well know. You watched the debate last night. I watched the debate last night. I kind of nodded off while I was watching the debate last night, but it used to be 7,000 Democrats running for president of the United States. Now it's, uh, you know, 1,000 Democrats running for the president of the United States. Young Democrats, yeah. did they speak to the young Democrats last night? Did you hear anything that your group said, hey, they're speaking to us because your group is going to make the difference in 2020? I think that there's been a little too much talk about medicine. And we need to focus on other issues that are greater to the issue, greater to the nation. We want to see people talk about the student debt crisis that's mounting and hurting people's ability to borrow, to get a home, to invest in their futures, to take any risks with their careers. People are so saddled with debt, they have to go directly into employment. I think it's also important for us to get them focused on for people across the country, what I call guns and butter. That's safety and the economy. Guns and butter. The Democratic Party and the people, 12 candidates who are on stage. We had a party at Hook Hall on George Avenue, which was a great event, uh, attended by a large group of young professionals in the city. They didn't focus enough on what are we doing for guns in our nation? We're expecting Beto O'Rourke to talk about El Paso and the tragedy that occurred there and how we're keeping our community safe, but also internationally, how we're treating leaders of other nations and ensuring that we're keeping great foreign relations. Um, when it comes to the economy, we need to focus on ensuring that companies are operating responsibly, but have the opportunity to thrive. I think t the talk about taxes for corporations and wealthy individuals is important, but we also need to balance that with not scaring away middle of the road voters that fear the government is getting too big. Because the only thing, in my opinion, that matters in 2020, it's not the coast, it's Ohio, it's Indiana, it's Pennsylvania. Illinois, it's Pennsylvania, yeah. it's Wisconsin, it's Florida. These are the places that are gonna yep. decide our election. Because, no, so, unfortunately, no. we're living in an electoral college system. And people in the middle of the country, they don't understand what's going on with our relations with Syria and Afghanistan and Turkey and the Kurds. They want to know, am I safe? And generally, we've been safe since the unfortunate Republican has been in office since 2016. We need to feel that the person that we're going to deliver from the Democratic side is going to do something revolutionary to get rid of these foreign wars, but also keep us safe at the same time. So what do you, so what do you think? You go back to the guns conversation. And yep. Pete Bay, you, you saw that go through, yep. right? And um, he kind of cut that conversation short. Right. It needs to be a greater conversation. I think people are too scared. You said scared you guys were waiting for it, and he was trying to give it, but he got shot down quickly. People are scared of but, but, threatening the NRA. Yeah, but, but guess what? You, you said that's what you're waiting to hear. Right. Think, so Beto, Peter, I th Peter yeah, Beto, I th Beto. I, th I, I think I Beto and Mayor Pete really skirted solutions. How are we going to get from where we are now to sensible gun Absolutely. legislation that's going to keep communities safe? Because it's not just the ARs and the AKs. It's handguns that are responsible for most of the violent crime that we see in communities. So, but they're, but they're illegal handguns. These are illegal I mean, handguns. I mean, most primarily. of them are illegal, right? I mean, you know, we, no one's so talking about how we're going to get the universal illegal. background checks for people purchasing. Support it. We, look, look, and ensuring that people with mental that. illness don't get their hands on these weapons. That needs to be brought to the forefront and not just skirting around the issue because they're passing on blame and scared of shaking up the NRA. Well, I like to talk about how you get the illegal guns off the street. I mean, you're talking yeah. about the gun, you know, we know that mass shootings have taken place. We know that we need to get assault rifles and everything out of people's hands. Right. Got that, right? Right. But these illegal guns that are in the street, if you go and, you know, right around the corner and talk, the kids have better guns than the police have right now. How do they get these guns? All these illegal guns that are out here. It's yeah, a I tough mean, problem. Yeah, I mean, you it, know, no one's addressing the illegal gun system that we have in this country, but more importantly, in the urban areas 
that's really causing a lot of violence. Now, gun buybacks have generally been ineffective. One, because there are so many guns, and two, because people will bring broken guns and turn those in. Uh, something that's been a little more effective is them raising the price for guns that have potentially been used in the commission of a crime. And when guns get turned in for those buybacks and turn-ins, then we get a higher rate of yeah, I mean, uh, dangerous weapons off the street. Yeah, people are breaking in these houses these days. Right. I got my wife and my kids. You coming in with your illegal gun, but people are telling me I can't have a gun in my house. What's and the you, sense in that? What's the sense in that? Right. And I think that that's the sentiment when I talk to folks on the street who are for tough gun laws, but right. at the same time, they don't want you to take their gun to protect their family in their house. So that's, that's one of the things. What did you hear that you liked from any of the candidates last night? I still think they're just, you know, yeah. too, no one's telling me how they're going to pay for any of this stuff. You know, everyone's saying how we all need to get along. I mean, I didn't hear, you know, we, we all know, and people have uh, said it a thousand times, their feelings towards the, the current president, Correct. right? Everyone has that. They, they got that picture, voters right? Voters don't care. But voters aren't there. They want to know, what are you going to do for me? And I don't know. I don't think morality is going to win this election. Right? They say, we're, we're more moral than you are, so therefore you should vote for me. I don't know. I'm also, talking also to people don't think don't the think talking point of, we're going to raise taxes, is getting people excited. <laughs> people on the lower or higher end of the income spectrum, or lower or higher end of the wealth spectrum, don't get jazzed up about that. Real issues, i.e., how are we going to create employment opportunity? How are we going to treat your student debt? How are we going to help you afford for your medicine? And how are we going to create employment opportunity and support entrepreneurs? That's real. So oddly, I think coming out of this, Senator Warren did well. Okay. Uh, Andrew Yang did well. Oh, um, okay. Andrew Yang and Tom Steyer took over the spotlight as okay. well as Tulsi Gabbard. I, I like this because this, this is not what we this is not what we're hearing on you know the major networks. You know well, Yang's name don't come up as someone who you know. But but he probably got the most applause of anyone on stage. Well, I mean, that's why we have you here. That's why we're talking, saying, what are the young Democrats? What do they think? Because you, you, you had a group there. You was hearing right. what people were saying afterwards. We're getting this firsthand from someone who was around yeah. a bunch of young Democrats. You know, when it was feeling what they were excited about. When Joe about. Biden says, I'm going to beat him like a drum, and he brings this same tired, repetitive statement, we just want to hear people with real solutions that are going to communicate and give the people in these battleground states, a sense of comfort about the direction of the nation. Now, what, now, Bernie Sanders. What do young folks feel about Bernie? Everyone loved Bernie a while ago, and I'm glad he's back. I'm glad he's healthy. I'm Absolutely. glad he's back on stage. I didn't hear you mention that name. Well, I think he always has had passion and energy and focus, but... When you talk about education, he's talking in, about that issue. In my, in my opinion, he has just moved us too far left to be a viable candidacy to lead the Democratic Party through 2020. So you uh, and, and so he's so, lost a little bit of his energy. So I don't you, know if you notice that. Well, a bit. I mean, he just he just you you just had surgery. He of lost some of that fire. Energy. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. You believe too? I, you know, this is where I am. You know, it's about winning. Right. And I don't care. You can stay far. 2020 left is you all win. about winning for so the Democratic you, Party. Can they win being that far to the left? Because this is an argument I have with. A lot of my friends who are professors and, you know, experts in the field, that you just can't win 2020, the general election, being jumping off the cliff too far left. And they think that, yeah, you can because the majority of Americans believe the too far left message points. And I, I don't agree with that. I don't. I don't think if you're going to talk to the middle. And the middle being, the middle is not a bunch of conservatives. The middle is being people like... Me and others that right. are just in, just not in the middle. We're just not, you know, you know, you're not telling me how you're gonna pay for universal health care. I want it, but if you're telling me all my taxes gonna, they said, don't worry about it. So you'll pay for it. Don't worry about it. You'll pay more right. for it. I, I'm not. That's not what I'm hearing. When the Republican incumbent does poorly, is when he goes way too far right. When he does well, is when he's center to just a little left of the far-right Republican. The work he's done in criminal justice reform has garnered praise uh, throughout the Republican Party, but also from skeptical Democrats mm. that are now opening their eyes to maybe he does have some redeeming qualities. The wow. same with the Democrats. When we go too far left, 
We scare people that we need on our side. We can't just target our messaging at these coastal cities because we can wash the, de the Republican Party as the, wor the world is currently shaped when it comes to far left policies and in big cities where there's a large educated population, but only 24% of Americans have a college education. We need to speak to people that are living the reality of the middle of the country. So who won? Who won last night? I would Give call me the top two. Top two. Elizabeth Warren came in the big dog. She walks out the big dog. She walks in the big dog. And who was who right behind the big dog? It, the one person who made up the most ground, I, I wouldn't say she was necessarily in second place, Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, you know what? I actually thought so too. Look at the polling. I from, sat there and look at and, the polling. And I looked People at it. People really saw that. And I thought she, she got a lot of speaking time. She was articulate. She was poised. And, and her she was being stern. a war veteran. And she was stern. You, you get the sense that she I was mean, tough. I mean, she had a backbone. She was tough. Yeah. She wasn't scared. Yeah. I looked at her a lot differently last night. I said, whoa, I mean, she yeah. needs to be somewhere up in this conversation. We'll see how it happens. Look, we'll be right back and we're just going to talk about how we can get you young folks can get involved how older Democrats can help the young Democrats do things to make sure that we push out these young Democrats in 2020. It's always real talk. We'll be right back. All right, we're back in the studio with Marcus Goodwin, the president of the Young Democrats, but more importantly, a wonderful good friend of mine, native Washingtonian. God is doing some phenomenal things. Uh, it's a real estate genius that actually has a heart and passion Thank you. for affordable housing, which is rare. It's really rare these days. Uh, but let's get back to Young Democrats. Tell me what's cooking, what's up next, where can we find you, how can people get involved? So our website's dcyds.org. Okay. Twitter and Instagram, which is the social media that we use the most, especially the millennial Absolutely. generation and Gen Z, we are at DCYDS, so mm -hmm. very simple. And on November 20th, we'll be hosting a Democratic primary debate that is in Atlanta, Georgia, We'll see who qualifies to get in there. That's going to be interesting. We had 12 people at the last debate in Ohio. I hope we're below the number 10. There's some folks that just don't need to be on the stage, but that's another issue for another that's segment. A, hey, I've been saying that since the beginning, but I tell you what, you're going to have, the Young Democrats are going to have their debate party, yes, right? Yes, sir. And we're going to be out there, always real talk. We're going to come out to the debate party. We're Thank you. We're going to film live from the debate party with the Young Democrats. Thank you. We're going to hear exactly, we'll have a panel of people after it's over talking about what they thought. Great. We'll get some real live updates, and that's the things that you're bringing to the table as president of Young Democrats. They, you know, appreciate you inviting us out. Yes, we'll be there. Appreciate we'll you happen. coming. Filming live from the debate with the Young Democrats. There's no age requirement can to I come, come be a I part come? of okay. it. There's no age requirement. Okay. All right. We want everybody who's interested in young issues to come be a part of the, the scene, the environment, the conversation. Well, we want to be there because everyone tells us what Young Democrats are thinking. But we're going to be there and hear directly from them. Great. How about that? Great. All right. Hey, thanks for coming by. Thank you for having me. And I tell you what, we're going to make an announcement so soon about something special that we have going on at Always Real Talk in partnership with my good friend Marcus Goodwin. Great. Hey, if it's Always Real Talk, join us next week because it's going to be it's going to be real. <music>